Once we know that a Markov process is uh, time homogeneous, there's a particularly simple way of representing it. And I'd like to show that. I'm going to show you two ways of re representing a time homogeneous Markov process, and they're both completely equivalent. So first, let's start with a discrete uh, space Markov process, a discrete state, discrete time Markov process, which has uh, three states, one, two, and three. And uh, as we dis discussed earlier, we have the certain ways of going from one state to the other. And this arc from one, from state two to state one, is annotated with the probability, that's the probability of going to state one if you're at state two. And this is called the transition probability for obvious reasons. And let's say that these transition probabilities have the following structure. I just more or less made it up. Uh, and so we're going uh, from here to here, 0 0.4. This goes from here to here, 0 0.5. Uh, and then it does no transition. This is 0 over here, which you don't even need to draw an arc, but just for completeness. This is 0 0.25. And then we have the self probabilities which need to sum up. So this is 0 0.2 um, because it's 0 0.4 here, 0 0.4 here, etc. So this is going to be 0 0.25. And this is a arc with 0 because it's going out with probability 1. So this is a, 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 a state diagram which shows the transition probabilities between the different states, and it completely represents what the uh, Markov process is doing. Um, and if we label the states as 1, 2, 3, then we can also call this, for example, 0 0.4 is the transition probability going from, going from 1, 2, 3, so you can call it P, 1, 3. And this depends only on the fact that we're at state 1. That's a Markov property. And it's independent of time. It doesn't happen. We don't know. It, it, it happens no matter what time it is because of the homogeneity property. And so we can write this as P13. This is going to be P11. And this transition probability over here is P12. And we can label the others likewise. When you label it in this way, it kind of uh, should remind you of uh, the elements of a matrix. And sure enough, we can write down the matrix like this. We call this the transition matrix A. And it's going to look like this. P11 is 0 0.2. So we put 0 0.2 over here. P12 is 0 0.2. Is, uh, sorry, P12 is 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 over here. P13 is 0 0.4. And if you read off the other probabilities, we get 1.0, 0, 0, 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. And this transition probability matrix is a more succinct representation of the uh, Markov process. And uh, this, pro this particular kind of matrix, all the rows sum to 1 because we have to be somewhere at the end at the end of the transition rows sum sum to 1 and therefore it's called a right stochastic matrix and uh, for those of you familiar with linear algebra this means that this particular matrix has some very interesting properties with regard to its eigenvalues but uh, we won't uh, discuss that uh, in this course Consider a Markov process that has three states, like before. So state 1, state 2, and state 3, like this, which has certain transitions amongst themselves. And uh, let us consider the state representation in the, in the matrix form, as we talked about before. So the matrix A, and I'll write it out again. Uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 1.0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 0.5, 0.25, 0.25. Now, at each time instant, we have a random variable that represents the distribution um, of the probabilities of being in these states. So, for example, 
uh, if we consider the time step i, so that's the time step, then the random variable x sub i uh, is a variable that takes on the uh, probabilities of being in different states which correspond to the uh, probabilities of the stochastic process being in those states. So, for example, let's look at time step equals 3. Then we can say that probability that x3 equals 1 is equal to, let us say, 0 0.2. That means that x3 has uh, the stochastic process at time step 3 is in state 1 with probability 0 0.2. Similarly, we can say probability that x3 equals 2 is equal to, let's say, 0 0.3, and then probability that x3 equals 3 will be the remainder, which is going to be 0 0.5. And one way to represent this would be like this. You can say x3 equals uh, this row vector 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. And so we interpret this as being that uh, at time step 3, uh, we have probability 0 0.2 in this figure of being in state 1, 0 0.3 of being in state 2, and 0 0.5 in being in state 3. Now, given the matrix like this, A matrix, and the representation like this, we have a particularly nice little way of representing things, which is we can say that x4, the probability of being in different states at time step 4, uh, depends on x3 like this. It, it is basically x3 multiplying a. And, and why is that? Because the probability of being in state 1, for example, at time step 4, is the probability of being at in state 1 at time step 3 and staying in state 1, which is 0 0.2 or probability of being in 0 0.3 at time step 2, uh, probably probability of being in time state 2 over here at time step 3 and going from 2 to 1 or being in state 3 at time step 3, which is over here, multiply that by the probability of transitioning over here, which is 0 0.5. So in other words, x4 is going to be 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, multiplying this matrix A, which is, and the only thing that we, 0 0.2, 1.0, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0, 0 0.5. So that we can say that x4 is going to be given by, and just, I just write out the first part of it, it is uh, 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 plus uh, 0 0.3 times 1.0 plus 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. That's the first value. And then the second and the third values will likewise be uh, the products over here. So uh, this row vector representation allows us to compute this. And then we can see that, essentially, if you take this x4 and we multiply that with a, then we're going to get x5, and so on. So these values of the different states, the random variables, can be obtained as basically x0, the initial value, and then a raised to the nth power. So the fifth, in, in this case, the the fourth power will give us for x5. And in general, by just multiplying a over and over again with the initial value, we'll get all the values of the random variables uh, through a fairly straightforward computation.